In this demonstration, I'll show you how to write a composite function f of g of x and g of f of x. This is part two of the composite function series. In the first question, we are asked if f of x is equal to x squared plus one and g of x is equal to the square root of x minus four, find f of g of x and g of f of x and their domains. We'll start off with this. f of g of x is the square root of x minus 4 to the power of 2 plus 1. We will evaluate the right side, simplify it, and we end up with x minus 4 plus 1. Now the reason why the square root disappeared is because of the square. And we end up with x minus 3. In this expression, there are no restrictions. However, since we applied g of x into our function, we also need to find the domain of g of x and see if there are any restrictions. So let's do that. We know that the radicand must be greater or equal to 0. Otherwise, you'll get a negative in the radicand and you end up with imaginary numbers. So we need to set the radicand, this part, to greater or equal to 0. And therefore, x must be greater or equal to 4. And that is our only restriction for f of g of x. So what I'll do is I'll shift this over, and we'll start off with the next one. Here, we are expected to find g of f of x. So, g of f of x is equal to the square root of this x squared plus 1 minus 4. Simplify the radicand. We end up with x squared minus 3. Now, originally for f of x, notice there are no restrictions. You can apply any x value and you'll still end up with a number, an output. But we also need to find the restrictions here, the domain. And we'll set this equal to greater or equal to 0 because the radicand cannot be less than 0 x squared minus 3 is greater or equal to 0. We bring that 3 over, and we square root both sides. So therefore, x must be greater or equal to plus minus 3 for this to be valid. And therefore, those are the restrictions. In question number 2, they ask, if f of x is equal to the square root of x squared plus 1 and g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2, find f of g of x. So we'll start off with f of g of x. And we will apply this function into here. x minus 2 to the power of 2. Don't forget the square root. Plus the square and the square root cancel, and you end up with x minus 2 plus 1 is equal to the square root of x minus 1. Now we have to find the restrictions. This must be greater than 0. Bring this over, and you end up with x is greater or equal to 1. Also remember that since it was g of x that was applied to the function, you need to find the restrictions for g of x as well. And let's do that over here. g of x was equal to x minus 2, and we know that this needs to be greater or equal to 0. So let's set it to greater or equal to 0. Bring this over. You end up with positive 2. And so that also needs to be a restriction that you state where x must be greater or equal to 2 for this composite function to be valid. And there you have it. That is how to compute composite functions that are slightly more complicated than those found in part 1. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.